Hello everybody, this is John Brewer. This week I want to talk a bit about the nature of the universe. Specifically, I want to talk about the way Space Engineers creates these enormous universes for us to fly through. Like most, if not all, large world games, Space Engineers uses what's known as procedural generation to create its worlds. What exactly does that mean? Well, the easiest way to think of it is probably to represent the world not as an enormous single file, but as a function or procedure. That is, after all, where we get the name from. When we create a world, whether for a single or a multiplayer game, we get issued a randomly generated world ID. The world ID itself is just a 128-bit integer, which is to say a number somewhere between 0 and about 3.4 times 10 to the 38. The world ID is used to create a function that tells the game what asteroids are in what location. When you fly to a new location in Space Engineers, the game feeds your location into that function and gets back the location and asteroid IDs of the base world. Asteroids are generated from their IDs in an analogous way. The big difference between how some other sandbox games, like Minecraft for instance, handle the data and how Space Engineers handles it is what gets stored to the hard drive. With Minecraft, the first time a new chunk is generated, it is immediately saved to disk. Space Engineers only saves an asteroid if it's been changed by a player. Otherwise, it can just recalculate what that asteroid looks like from the world ID function. The practical upshot is that spending several hours exploring in Minecraft might balloon your world to several gigabytes, while in Space Engineers, your world would only start growing significantly if you started mining many of the asteroids you find. By only retaining objects that have been changed from their natural state, Space Engineers radically reduces the amount of disk space it might use to keep a world consistent for players to explore. But the world ID generates one other set of game objects that are important here. Specifically, exploration ships. These are the abandoned and deactivated ships and stations that are hidden throughout the universe. Like the asteroids, their positions are generated from the world ID, and remain constant until interacted with by the player. In the last few episodes of Survival Exploration 201, we're going to focus on searching down these often elusive vessels. Although mods exist to track them, seeking out these ships with vanilla space engineers is the particular challenge we'll be grappling with. So join us for the remainder of this series as we search out these mysterious ships and bases in Survival Exploration 201. Until next time, I'm John Brewer, bringing you better gaming through applied mathematics.